Hello, welcome everybody to another Coding Clash stream. Uh, real quick, real quick before I started clashing, well, and even before that, what I was doing at the the beginning was testing out the commands that I have from Nightbot. Table flip was backwards, and also I c couldn't find a thoughtful quote. I was busy looking over a bunch of other stuff. I'm still trying to do my Java playground and my C++ playground, but still struggling with the Docker, so that's okay. Um, but no inspirational quote, so I did just post, put up a link to my Code Wars, where if you're having trouble with stuff on Coding Game, you might consider some of the challenges on Code, code Wars. They're a little easier. Um, and actually, some of them are the same. I just did a Sudoku checker puzzle here on Coding Game that I had already done previously on Code Wars, so it was a level 4 kata, so big points. But anyways, um, and then before we get to crashing, uh, one moment out a demo. I didn't realize it was a demo but I went ahead and did it anyway. So that's what I have here. Um but it is really good for uh, especially for beginners. It's um and dictionary concepts. And already while coding this I realized it could be done a couple of different ways. Like the way I did it, um you know I have an inventory list, I have a command list, um item dictionary, a total total of what we have in gold, our value in gold, um, and then a print string to format the uh, what you need to return. So, and even about halfway through I added the dictionary because um, because of the test cases requiring you to remove the item and affect the total. So that means now not only do you need to keep track of what's in your inventory list, you need to keep track of how much each of those items cost or was worth or their value. So. Um, that was easier done with the dictionary, which I did here. Um, let's see. So we're we're looking at add. So we're creating, we're affecting the total. So we're updating our running total, and then um, we're creating. Oh yeah, and then I have an if conditional line here, only if it's not already in the dictionary. So if you have um, duplicates. And that would only affect your running total or your totals. It does not affect your items in your dictionary. So, uh, line for is where we add it to the dictionary. And so we're targeting, you know, that command list, which is simply the command split into a list. So we can target, see some of the test cases here. So like even the first test, you need to target add helmet and 50. So you need to see what you're adding to your inventory. Uh, whether you're adding or removing, you know, first off, you look at the first one. And then if you're adding, we need to add the item. Although, I'm thinking, I, I didn't put anything, I don't think they do any duplicates. Because I don't think I coded any preventative measures for duplicates. So, if this was a code clash, this might actually yield like a 60% or an 80% after you submit it. Or even a puzzle. I think some of the puzzles like are like this too. So y you've got it correct for the test cases. And even, you know, let's see, validator. I still don't know the difference between tests and validators, which is kind of bad. I just feel like it's just extra tests. Like, use the test. Maybe these are the tests that are visible while you're doing the challenge and the validators. Well, no, because you've got view validators. I don't know. Either way, well, let's see. We've got test four, then a validator. Looks like it's the same. So really, these are just eight items, but really four tests. I don't know. Anyways, if there were to be duplicates, I believe this code would break. But you can protect against that by adding a couple of things in this area right here. How you would protect against that, um, if you didn't want duplicates in your list, you would check to see if it already exists in your list, and then if it does, just affect the totals. Don't affect the dictionary or the list. However, if it does not exist in your... Um, see, I have it in dictionary here, but if you were worried about duplicates, you really could just tuck... Oops, don't want to warp them. You can tuck this line into this if conditional or wait, you might want to keep it as a separate if conditional, because this isn't code golf, we're not worried about length, so I mean it doesn't hurt to add another, 
And also my readability is kind of, I don't know. But, like, I almost want to, like, space it out a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. It looks a little congested, but it works. It functions. We can do all the test cases. It's a little slow, because for whatever reason, uh, I've been seeing there's been issues with the code clashes today already. Um, and I've been updating the playground, too. I haven't even been clashing, say, for a couple last night, two nights ago. I can't remember. All right, so that's that. So we did the demo. Um, I'm actually going to email myself that, just because, I mean, I did it. Why not? I, it's documented here, but then once these videos, yeah, rather than writing it all over again, I usually email my code back to myself. So there we go. And subject, uh, wait, it's a contribution, but is there a title? Equipment inventory. There we go. By one Tony Mo. Okay. Send that. Right now, let's get into some clashing. I've actually slipped a little bit. I was up at like 1200 something, now I'm closer to 1500, so didn't have the best of luck. Ooh, and it looks like we're jumping right in. Nope, okay. We have some time. All right, so here's the link. There, there we go. So, oh, Carpen's on and Polynomio. Oh, some ridiculousness in chat today so we're gonna leave that it's just the clash chat I mean it's fun but you know talking about things like killdozer and uh, not America's proudest attributes so all right let's see and I don't know if these are bot accounts or not Not sure. I think they're. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Bleep. <laughs> oh, sorry. The leet. Leet speak. Oh, it might just be the four. Oh, there we go. Nice. Yeah, that doesn't look like a bot. But usually they're like. I think they're usually level sevens so if I were to click this oh too slow sometimes they remove the bots too but no these all look like people cool. and we're doing all the clashes I'm not great at code golf but whatever I'll try it I'm getting better I actually was watching um, Retcher's stream it was like ranked 100 something so does a lot more of these things and he was giving me a lot of useful tips. I forget which video that is, but it's on the YouTubes. But yeah, he was giving me some tips about everything from just taking out spaces to converting to Chinese text, which was kind of tricky, but interesting. Like coding and an encoding. Oh, man. Sorry. That's why I've been focusing on the playgrounds, is I've already set things in motion that I can't take back via the socials. So now I'm like to a deadline. All right, let's see. Sparse matrices are matrices with huge dimensions, but very few not null data. For instance, imagine a matrix with one entry per movie. Viewer. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> so it's just a big empty matrix with a few values. So. What are we looking for? Let's see. Oh. Okay. So now we just need to determine the width and the height and then scan it. Create a list. Yeah. Let's do that. So my list. And then, uh, with height. What? 
Oh. finish reading the directions I suppose I was hoping I could just bust out a TD array and be done but they don't want to make it complicated on this so okay so we're trying to pull the coordinates for non-null entries that one comma zero. Oh, dang got a quick all right, so dealing with two matrices? What? Okay. But let's look at some test cases. Is it literally just put it printing out? out every other line skipping the first line and then read all the directions. This is going to be a pain. All right. Compacted representation of their sum. So as a reminder, the sum S of the two matrices A and B is such that for every I and J So for every coordinate, we're combining the coordinates from A and B. That's weird. So why not just evaluate matrix A and then evaluate matrix B? Well, we got to combine them. Oh. Well, I think Carpin's got it too. Yep, they're done. <laughs> so it's just us. It's okay. Still got ten minutes, nine and a half. Right, um. Trees in sparse matrix A, the next lines. Uh oh, are we lagging? I think we're lagging a little bit. Oh, So 
basically if the coordinates are the same then they can be combined otherwise hmm so how do I keep track of that put out I think I'm close. I think I'm close to figuring out something that might work. It might be hacky, but so this loop. Let's separate these out a little bit so we can see, because this isn't the shortest, this is the fastest. So we got this loop. And we're doing NA. So this is probably not the best place to put this variable. I mean. they're processing this and then that so I'd probably put that variable up here okay so we have a list I'm thinking we might even need three lists or yeah my X list and then my Y list And then something like if x in my x list and y in my y list. Ooh. So already I can see there's going to be a problem with that because just being in there doesn't necessarily mean that it's a corresponding y. So I'm almost thinking like we should have tuples but three values like lists of lists and then if the okay so yeah list of lists there we go and then list of lists dot append list <laughs> and then put my list back in here it's an empty list construct a list X my oh no this dot append Y Val there we go now if there we go take this back out then wait a minute this is also going to have an error too because we're assuming that the value is the same. In this example it is. We've got an X coordinate which matches and a Y coordinate that matches but this value between matrices A and B could be different. It doesn't have to be the same. So uh, trying to avoid using the built-in functions index of I don't know what the equivalent is for Python I'm thinking Java has an index of where you can return the index of an item in a data structure so that would be targeting oh sorry I get distracted easily anyways we got four minutes let's see so thinking about this as truples <laughs> like whatever three tuples would be so we have lists of three values we got an X a Y and a value so having that in the list of lists we can compare the X and the Y and if both of those are the same then add so we almost need a four item in my list or no list of lists and this is not optimized by any means this will be a very taxing algorithm 
So we'll loop through every item in list of lists and then do if item at oops at position zero equals y list at position zero and item uh, one is equal as well. So we're comparing x and y coordinates in position one. If that is the case, then oh, if <laughs> it's like what, what's going on there. So if that's equal and that's equal, then what? Um, item at position two plus equals my list, or we could just do val. <laughs> Let's not make it super complicated. Um, also, we need to append an int version of these instead of whatever. I mean, I guess it's int here. Actually, maybe we don't need to do that. But that's something to keep in the back of our minds if, well, anyways. So we've got values. Ooh, also, we're going to need to replicate this, actually the whole thing, after we, uh, my list equals an empty list. Also, so if they match, else, oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. put it this way if my list not in list of lists now because <sighs> mm, see and this is where uh, it's that value it's that value that's screwing it up because we can't just tell automatically if this list exists in the list of lists. And this isn't even a 2D array. We're just dealing with, you know, we're keeping track of how many coordinates and their corresponding value. Oh, wait a minute. The value is going to be the same. Yeah. List of, I mean, I'm running out of time, but list of lists dot append my list. So with a little more time that could have given me the correct answer but we're we're not gonna I didn't even format any output so we might as well we get the big zero for that one so that's okay let's see I'll still share my code because I don't know let's see some Ruby okay it's so getting the width and the height doing some stuff, going for the NA matrix, making a list it looks like of, oof. Oh, so targeting on those coordinates and then increasing the value. Okay, that's a lot more compact than what I was trying to do. But yeah, this comparison is what I was trying to replicate in Python was, you know, if there's an X and Y that already exists in, I want to say, no? I don't know. Fun. Let's see what, oh, he didn't share his, or they didn't share theirs. I don't know if it's men or women, but, okay, let's go again. I mean, I think you got to go a few times to get those really easy ones, the low-hanging fruit. Oh, no. That one was quick. I don't know if it matters after it starts, if you can still, I think you can join late. But let's see, all right, so fastest. Let's see. Level.
This is not a low hanging fruit. All right, let's see. Okay, so we're looking at chart count. And word count. And the sentence <laughs> count. We're going to calculate those and print them out. Calculate the grade. So, word list equals split. So that's how you get your words, although you've got to be careful of punctuation. Well, no, I guess it just doesn't matter. I mean, I think this would count as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. So word count equals len word list. That's part it's easy. And then for char, oh, no, we got to do this down low. Yeah, we can calculate it afterwards. Doesn't matter. For char in text. Oh. If char not. Does punctuation count? Let's see, 29. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, actually, I got an idea. print len text. Let's see if we include 103. And is this the would you like them here or there? I would not like them anywhere. Ah, oh, we don't have the okay, do we at least have a short one? other stuff because that'll force it to be a rounded now we need grade equals zero okay now we just need to calculate grade and figure out so 29 here's the lazy way to do that Just print the length of that. Doesn't matter what's going on with the tests. So we got 40. Okay. So is 29. It's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, yeah, it's 29, right? 11, 29, yeah. So, now we can go back and finish this uncommented out. If char is alpha, Our count plus equals one. What? Why are you? What? Is it having a 
a type error? What is it? Oh man, we got it again. Oh well. Uh. <laughs> I know a quick fix we could do. Space count. Zero. Oh no. <laughs> no, because then we need punctuation too. And is alpha kinda let's see, cannot access memory is alpha for type string. Isn't that the whole point of an is alpha? And then usually it well if we take these off, it'll it'll recommend Oh jeez. No. Is al oh no, it's not gonna do it. Char dot is yeah, alpha. Does it just not want me using the parentheses? That's weird. Is that a thing? I feel like sometimes I've seen that. Python is alpha. Let's see an example of it. Yeah, there's parentheses with it. So. Yeah, and then the example they have. Yeah, if char that is alpha in text. Well, let's just see. Print char count. Let's see what we get. Ah. We'll actually do text two. Okay, let's run it on that. Let's see if we get 29, 40. So is alpha. It's picking up the spaces and the punctuation too. No, it's not. So yeah, you need the parentheses. Okay, so take that back to that. We don't need that for now. Um, let's see. Someone else is getting it too. 75, that's, that's not bad. Hmm. The level of the text. So we got a calculate average <laughs> letters equals zero. Average sentences. I can actually just change this to that. Okay. So we gotta calculate those to calculate this. I think we could actually leave that and then instead of this average oops I guess I could have just <laughs> put the underscore there we go and is that correct there so we're subtracting those averages now we need to do average letters equals char count divided by a <laughs> word count and then average sentences equals words <coughs> what 
Now we're keeping track in, of lines? What are sentences? Do we need to keep track of punctuation? Hmm. So we do need a sentence count. So Elif char in punctuation. Actually, is there a is punctuation? There we go. Three minutes, dang. Um, uh, what we could do... Nah, it's just so janky, though. Is there... string maybe import string to string dot pung yeah okay then sentence count plus equals one then we do sentence count divided by oh and also forget that we need to multiply this by a hundred and this as well we're dividing by the len of word list our word count actually wait right yeah divided by the words okay times 100 Let's see how close we are. No. Oh, we're printing out char counts still. There we go. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. Get it? No. Oh no. So we're calculating it incorrectly for that test case. Hmm. So that tells me that. Oh, what's up, Marilyn? See so Ace. Oh yeah, regardless of putting the parentheses. Let's see, because that's what I'm thinking right now. They're they're getting close, so I think I'm cutting off. I wonder if I should do average letters as a float. No. Dot zero. Oh, I timed out. No, <laughs> never mind. Well, thanks for the the attempt, but yeah, it was something about a matter about rounding and truncating, I'm thinking. So, we got 25, but, alright, again, not the best, so, let's hope we get some easier ones. Or at least ones that I'm kind of understanding a little more what's going on. I mean, let's see, so we got this one. I don't think pulleys on online so that's okay also not that you can even see these chats because I got my chat over code game chat so let's see 
Yeah, and then it makes these people disappear too. Oops. All right, let's see what we got. Shortest. Not my best, but we'll see. Write the number of days in a certain month of a certain year in modern Western calendar. Hmm. So from calendar import month range. Let's see. I don't know what other way that they expect you to calculate. I mean, you could just do a switch statement. Not a switch statement, sorry. A dictionary. How many days are in the months, but then you got leap years. So then if the, oh... I guess you could calculate if the year is a leap year, and then look up. Let's see if this works, though. So we've got, what's the inputs again? The month. Yeah, year month. So print month range year month, m comma y. Or no, other way, y comma m. I think they did that on purpose. Tuple equals that, and then I just want to print. Wait a minute. A tuple of position one. There we go. It almost feels like cheating though, so maybe I'll look up, because I just imported a library to find the answer. I think a less cheating way to do it, well first we've got to do a shortest, so we got to get rid of all this, and as well as this, 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 that, we don't need any of that. for my tuple I mean I can do this that gets us down to 91 with all test cases passing however I believe and this is coming from when I was watching Retcher or Rector I don't, I don't know he's from he's French so it could be a French word um, Anyways, a guy that I was watching his stream, and he's like ranked 150 or something like that, something ridiculous. He was telling me that M comma Y could equal, let's actually see, I've got those notes right here. Let's go to, I emailed my notes. Let's see, oh my gosh. Let me search, uh, oh, is it Retcher? Yeah, ret retcher squarity golf code tricks. Let me do a shot. I'm still working on shout outs, but here's his name on Twitch. And I believe I host him. I try to host all the Twitch streamers on the coding game. 
So if you ever just look at my profile, you should see these people streaming as I add them. But he said these notes right here. Okay, so this could be, let's go ahead and comment this out for now. And then do m comma y equals open. Is that right? Yeah. Open zero. Did I break it? I might have broken it. Yeah. Wait. Uh, because they're int? Let's see. No, doesn't like that. <laughs> uh, I think there's a way. I think you can use map to make all those ints. I mean, another thing you could do. Let's see. Let me look at this part. Because this is another neat little trick for the code golf. Where is it? I equals input. There we go. So you could do this. I equals input. And then you could change, although no, wait a minute. There's there's trouble with ints. Like if you use i equals input, then you can replace this as just i. Well, let's actually save it so I don't break. We still got eight minutes. Let's see. So let's go ahead and uncomment these then it's I oh no but you don't and then if we were to comment this back out So that fixes it. Okay. So that means we can take out instead of saying input twice, however that's what, five characters and we're adding I could do the math in my head, but for now we're going to be lazy. We're going to just have code and game tally it up for us. 91. We don't actually save any any size doing it this way. But this is a way you could do it. So if you actually have like a maybe three instances of input in your code that you need to cut down on, you could replace input with i or just some variable. Um, but yeah, I think since in this situation they're both ints, yeah, I'm good on that. Let's see. Ninety one, you know, just a little over six, seven minutes, almost seven minutes. So that's not bad. We'll see. Okay. Don't think any of these are bots. I think these are all real people. Nice. Alright, well I'll leave that one going. Let's do another tab. Let's see, we're about an hour. Yes, yeah, do an hour, hour and a half on this one, I'm thinking. I don't know, we got a long ways to go to get that badge. Uh, that's going to lag the, the stream a bit. Also, I could cl close some of this other stuff. I'm not actively working on this stuff right now. So. Ugh. Yeah. Sorting algorithms. Oh, reverse. 
I haven't done this one yet. get it. It's running slow. Oh no, error. Okay. No. What in the world? <laughs> so it's not the count of the dollar signs. Spaces? Chars equals list. that found to oh wait so now it's always going to error because we're counting oh no so we're counting spaces except this one Modulo of two equals equal does equals equals one. That's fine. So if they're odd, count the spaces. No. Yeah, if they're odd, count the spaces. Oh, if No, that's not right either. If it's odd, count the spaces.
Okay. No. Invalid syntax. What? Oh, modulo 2. Oh, Carpin got it. 50%. Man. Hmm. Oh, I got it. Wait a minute. Let's see, we've got eight minutes. So. First off, that's not. So I need two here. Okay, so again, we're just. Ah, uh, last one. Let's see. So we're not incrementing the count if it is a. Even Okay. Got it. Char equal equal to chars at position zero. Um, although, wait, do I already have? Okay. No. Index out of range, 17. So. Another way we could go about doing this is we can affect the count after the loop is done. So we could do if n modulo 2 equals equals 0 count uh, final equals uh, length of whole string equals that and then for every s input we are adding whole string plus equals s right and then so that's for every line and only the line minus count. Okay, Did that fix it? iffy about that. No. So we're minusing this. Oh. Okay. So if we take this out. Let's try that. Did it break everything else? Slowly. Yeah, clash of code is very slow. Alright, there we go. Did I get the full? Share my code. Twenty five. Come on. <laughs> what? What? 
Let's see what a 75% got. What did they account for? X equals LOL. What? I don't really understand all that. So they they are they did hard code dollar signs. But I thought it was just if there wasn't a unique character in it. Or if there was more than one type of character in it. Let's see. Fifty percent on Python, let's see what they got. Yeah, so th I guess we were supposed to be counting dollar signs. Okay. Well I don't know. I think my algorithm would still work for that. I think where it was struggling was... Wait, are we doing... Yeah, if n is even, you print the total. Otherwise... Whoa. Yeah, yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Although I think I'm just misunderstanding the algorithm so let's see yeah what's up pins looking at your code so you were actually targeting the dollar signs and then dealing with lengths and then ah thanks for the follow kuba but yeah whereas mine i was more on the looking at you know if there's a unique character in the whole string and i, I was kind of iffy about that too because calculating the length of a whole string while you're building it throughout I've often had problems with that and I'm just assuming that it's just any char so yeah see if it's only dollar signs then that's the condition where I was testing I understood that or I was thinking that it could be any char I mean as long as there was only one type of char in there or if it was unique but I guess that wasn't the case. We were looking at dollar signs. All around, I don't think anybody did a hundred. Let's see. Oh nope. We got one. Let's see. Hmm. So Oh, that's looking like some code all concise. So they're checking for the error here if there's anything other than a dollar sign or a space. So, you know, if X isn't in this string for all of that in join S, okay. I mean, it doesn't make total sense to me. I don't think I'd be writing something like this. Like, that's farther than my understanding, but at the same time, dealing with links. Yeah, I don't know. That was a tough one. That was that was pretty tough. And we still got a couple people clashing. Let's see. We'll go back to the results of this. All right, I did just by eight characters. Ooh, that was close. They got a lot going on in there, and they're doing a map. That's what I was thinking of too on that last clash. Is mapping int to that and using that open trick. But anyways, that's good on code golf, but best we can do is try oh we got people still clashing 30 seconds so but I mean we do have an example of 100% of it here though I don't really get what it looks like yeah multiplying left with right yeah cuz that's their check here they've got if it's either space or dollar sign if it's not a space or a dollar sign, throw an error. Otherwise, it doesn't look like they're actually checking to see if it's even or odd, though. Like, did I completely miss that? If, so if there's a space in it, length of x times y that 
That's confusing. I don't know about that. I mean, clearly it's got 100%, so, but I think that's what I was missing was doing this multiplication thing. I was checking to see if it was even or odd, and then either counting spaces or counting dollar signs. Oof, that was a tricky one. Let's, uh, let's see, we got everyone. Yeah, it's complete. I think we're going to just do another one. So, maybe one or two more, and then I think I'm going to go for a walk. It's really nice out. Maybe do some more. I don't know. I really want to put out the Java and C++ playgrounds. I still haven't figured out their dockers, but it looks like coding game's kind of lagging, too. There might be a lot of people on, but people were talking about that in the chat earlier, too. But you can see it's, and how's our stream going? It's lagging. We're getting up there pretty, this might get a little glitchy. See, I can go ahead and close another couple of windows, my code wars and my code pen. Yeah, I can close all this stuff. Uh, actually, I like to. Let's see. Don't need that anymore. So we go to. And that. Ooh, how's that for. Yep. It's starting to show me some yellow. What was I doing with this? Yeah, go to tech IO, so I guess I don't need that. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Actually, if it'll let us do another clash. Let's try refreshing it. again give it some time who knows I might be taking my walk a little early and then I'll probably do another clash today if the clash is working or maybe I'll do some streaming of working on the playgrounds because I mean I got Java pretty close like it's close to where my Python's at but there's no interactivity which is kind of like the main point of a playground so <clears throat> I think I'm going to publish under under construction and then you know include a link to get Eclipse but yeah it looks like clashing is kinda kinda broke right now or it's just lagging the servers are probably overtaxed so I know I've seen a lot of new faces around and I've only been on coding game for what like not even a month maybe two months so we'll see we shall see yeah it's it's pretty laggy so, alright, we'll call it there, because, I mean, the more laggy it is, the more my stream might get interrupted, so that's probably not good for the stream. Uh, I got my video chopped last night, so we'll call it good for there. I'll try to do some more clashing today, but it was a pleasure. Thanks, everyone, who stopped by. Um, yeah, hopefully the servers get a little, uh, little better. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe there's a lot more people clashing now, and so, which is great, because... I know I get tired of clashing against the robot accounts, so. Alright. But we do have... Let's see if any of my people are online. No? Let's see. Search Python. I mean, I've got a couple of people that I follow on, but no one for code. What? Why are we? Oh no. Browse. Software and game development. Let's try to find someone with like no viewers. on the 
this one. Oh, wow. Someone else is rating this channel, too, I think. Let's see, a tutorial recoding for of Myriad for the C64. I mean, it sounds interesting. I don't know what they're doing, but they're, just, they're streaming in software and game development, so that's good enough for me. We'll do old school coder. Let's go ahead and raid this person. Let's have fun. If it doesn't really destroy my stream. Oh no, and now we're down to two people, so I don't know if it's actually worth it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> We're gonna raid with the two of us. Let's see. Two or three. Uh, either way, I'm trying to do more raids at the end of my streams, even though I just did a little like short hour stream just now. So let's do. Okay. All right. Okay, but I think they just got another raid, so, alright, well have fun everybody, and like I said, I'm going to go take a walk here soon, after what old school coders do, and then I'll try to do another stream later today. I'll at least do a stream of doing backgrounds, but I'll try to do some clashing streams, so, alright, thanks for stopping by everybody, I will see you later. Let's get ready for a raid. And as far as mine, I'm going to turn it off for a sec. On. Hello, welcome. Oh, some assembly on microcontrollers. Ah. <laughs> welcome, Raiders. Welcome. Oh, Python. Oh, well, I'll be doing some of that soon. We'll be using Pygame to convert what we've got in assembly here for the 64 into Python. That's going to be sometime over Easter. Right. But assembly, assembly on a microcontroller, that, that would be interesting. I'll have to... Uh, I have to look at that. I know I'm le I'm learning ARM assembly at the moment. But welcome. Hello, John here. Thank you for following. Hope you enjoy the stream. <laughs> you haven't seen assembly since college days. Well, 